Well, good morning, everybody. It's certainly a dull one. <laughs> I'll give you that. So I've come back to the location um, that featured sort of loosely in my last video. Um, if you haven't seen that, maybe go back and have a look at that. There's a beautiful image at the end and it might all make a bit more sense than you can come back and watch this one. So this particular location is a very, very steep um, wooded river valley and it retains much of its old characteristics because from a farming point of view it's absolutely no good um, for farming purposes. So all the woodland plants, the trees and the, the woodland plants are, are as they've been for hundreds of years. The trees, lots of beautiful character trees, certainly veteran, not necessarily ancient trees, but uh, and, and a nice mix of trees too from oak, beech, birch, alder, all sorts of different species. Um, mountain ash as well and cherry so lots of opportunities for for the likes of me that just love loves photographing in these locations but I wanted to come back particularly because where I got the last the last image in the video the woodland is predominantly beach and I didn't get to explore it because the weather was so bad now two reasons for going back there one because uh, a, I, I want to explore it for myself to see if there's any more opportunities and B, it would be nice to revisit that composition and just talk you through it as I would in a normal video when I find these things. So I will see you in just a second. Nice little open section and a hint of blue sky about uh, certainly rain clouds up in front though, so I'm hoping I don't get uh, get soaked again. So I just wanted to check in and ask a question. Um, I want some feedback, just put that down, for the channel. And the question is this, over the years that I've been producing videos, I do feel that um, I often photograph things that I've photographed before. And an example of that will be the woodland floor images, um, particularly, I suppose, let's, let's focus on those, the woodland floor images. Whereas they're very, very simple to take, certainly for me, um, they always make really lovely, lovely images anyway, but are people getting a little bit, um, I won't say bored, but, but used to seeing those, those images and want to see something new. Now, creating new images um, comes at a cost in that they come along less frequently. Let's just say that in my scoring system, uh, images that score three are, I would say, things that I come across on a regular basis and they're easy for me to find and they make regular content for the channel. Or would you rather be part of seeing the more elusive images come to fruition. Now the downside of that of course is that there'll be more searching in the video and uh, probably fewer images to boot but when I find those images they're going to be of a higher level than, than what for example most of the woodland floor images uh, are. Now don't get me wrong there will be outstanding examples of woodland floor images I just I just wouldn't take the, the regular ones that I find are quite easy to find. So let me know in the comments below what you think about that, whether you would rather be part of um, a more elusive search looking for more spectacular images or whether you think the content is fine as it is and I'll just photograph whatever it is that I, that I see on any particular day. I do feel that that comes at the expense of sometimes missing out on, on other things that might have presented themselves that are of a higher quality but if you don't go and look for those things you never know what you've missed so there is that about it I suppose. Like I say I'll leave some comments below let me know what you think. There's an oak tree just here that caught my eye when I was walking up the path. Some beautiful shapes to the branches 
just took a quick snap with my phone. I often use the phone because it's just so much quicker than getting the whole camera out just to check compositions. And the light isn't fantastic, as I've already said earlier on this morning, but there's a section of, of, the, of the tree sort of where the, the crown starts to develop. Um, there's an area there that's really quite interesting and behind it is, is another tree that's virtually blocking out all the bright sky. And I'm just going to take a quick, a quick image of that because I think it's certainly a tree that, that's one to come back to. And if I can get a longish lens on it, I haven't got very, very long lenses. I think 160 is my longest lens. But I might just be able to isolate that little section there and, uh, and just put it on as a starting image. I'll uh, have a go at that. Oh, it's a beautiful shaped tree. It's actually better. You know, I've got it lined up on the LCD than I, than I imagined it would. Um, the image that I took on the phone really doesn't do it justice, and that looked all right. But when I get it here with a long lens and, and the, the perspective is compressed and I can just see the shapes of the branches, it's really lovely, a lovely mature example of an oak tree. I'll just show you on the back of this LCD now. So that's the, the tree seen from a, a slight distance. And I just wanted to show how zooming in can improve that composition. Just a few tweaks to the composition there. Um, you see that branch there just holding the top corner and this one here coming out to the right. And that's balanced by these two big main branches off to the left hand side. Now coming a bit closer just to eliminate more of that white sky. It is at the expense of some of the other branches but now if I move, if I move, tilt it down and just eliminate that bright spot at the top it really encloses the image and you've still got the branch here to the right and a little bit more move to the left I'm going to come out a little bit and I'm thinking on a day when there's more atmosphere that, that will provide a lovely composition it's such a lovely structure in the tree I actually don't mind the bits of white dotted about but I certainly think it needs to come in a little bit. If I go in really tight, it, it gets rid of all the white, but you don't see the aerial structure of the root of the, uh, the tree branches quite the same, and they don't hold the composition. But that, that position there is really lovely. And uh, like I say, you've got these, these branches here on the left-hand side, just anchoring that top corner and echoed by these two here on the right and then you've got this lovely selection of branches down here and basically you've got, you've got that nice fan effect and as I said before the the tree in the background really does help to to enclose the scene and and you can really appreciate the the the, the mood that's within um, the canopy of the tree I just wish um, there was a bit more atmosphere but I'm going to take that now and put it on for you um, as you can see, aperture is f11, and I think that's suitable. Second exposure doesn't really matter, 100 ISO, so I'll put that on now. So whilst I'm passing, I thought I'd just show you this uh, particular scene that I, I photographed um, when I was here last week. So right above my head, the arcing branch. I actually don't know what tree it is. It's a beech tree. Um, yeah, the arcing branch there really caught my attention. Last week, I'll just spin this round and I can talk you through the composition. So there, that was <clears throat> the composition that I was really drawn to last week and again with the weather we stood around for quite a while because we knew that a storm was going to come in. Um, I'll show you the first image that I took um, now. As you can see nice light conditions and then I'll follow that now by the second image which was taken in quite um, heavy rain. 
the heavy rain wasn't sufficiently heavy to really make a huge amount of difference um, in, in this instance, but uh, it's certainly a nice composition. But in the end, um, I decided that really all it was is just a picture of a tree. And apart from those arcing branches, it didn't have anything really significant to raise the bar enough to warrant um, an image what I would consider to be rather quite special. So, I just thought I'd point that out whilst I was walking past. It was, um, I mentioned it in the last video, but I didn't show the image then, but whilst I was passing it now, I thought um, it'd be good to just talk about it. Lots of things in the background behind the tree, particularly these, well, that one, that, that dead, old, what looks like um, an ash tree. Um, it's a bit difficult to, to exclude as part of the frame. It would have been nicer to show more of the arcing branches and more of the tree, but these distractions become a problem when you start to pan out. So by closing in, you eliminate all them, but like I say, then it just becomes an image of just a tree with that one arcing branch feature, and it's not really enough. So worth, worth a quick discussion, I thought. I think I found a really nice image. Just look down here minding my own business walking on the track and I came across all this holly leaf fall holly bush directly above it, obviously but all along here there's lots of it just loads of decaying holly leaves and I love all that decaying matter with all those beautiful golden tones what grabbed me more than anything was this little spot here so down here there's an area in the middle where there's no other vegetation. Bit of grass here, bit of grass there. But when you go in, it's clear. And look at all those tones and textures. That's gonna make a really nice image. So let's get the camera out. So I've got my shot just in the nick of time. I didn't film the actual taking of it because there's an awful lot of blue sky that was heading my way and it's now here and um, it's casting bright hot spots on the composition. I do have uh, a white sheet that you might have seen me use previously, but um, I, I just wanted to use the, the regular flat light. I didn't want to use my diffuser if I didn't have to. Um, 120 mil macro lens I've used. I've got a pole case polarizer on because some of the surfaces of the, uh, of the leaves are still quite shiny, even though they're breaking down. I wanted to eliminate that as much as possible. Getting rid of the shininess it allows um, you to see more of the texture of the leaves. Um, I've done a focus stack, God knows how many images, <laughs> certainly a lot, because I just didn't want to risk any of the points being out of focus. That I will never know um, until I get the final image stitched together, but what I did, as, as you, you'll see me done before, started at the highest point that I could see within the frame and then just worked down, taking a series of images all the way to the bottom. Um, I'm using F16, the shutter speed is a quarter of a second and the ISO is 100. I'll just get the back of the camera up so you can have a quick look at that. So this is the frame lined up. Um, it does look quite a bit of a jumble at the moment. You can see the hot spots are on um, the composition which is not easy to eliminate. I'll try and see if I can cast a shadow over it now so you can see it a bit better there. The whole image hinges on these three is what I've, I've composed it around um, and as you can see there's no distractions round about in terms of green vegetation. That point just about here is the highest point and down here at the bottom is the lowest point that I've focused on. So this is generally the second shot, the second sequence that I took, the first being a little bit closer. Um, I have this habit of going back to my old slide film days where you had to get everything right in the camera so I composed the image as I wanted the composition um, to end up. I then realised that through focus stacking you get this focus breathing so you, you always have to crop some of the outer edge of the frame off and in realising that I would have lost some of the composition so this is the second shot that I took. Um, and I've pulled out just a bit to allow myself to recrop back in. I'll just show you on the back of the camera the image that I took. Um, just clear all that out of the way. 
So that there is the image that I arrived at. Um, obviously needs a bit of processing and this camera, uh, this video camera is just making it a little bit lighter than it actually is. Um, I need to dial that exposure down a little bit, um, which it actually is on the image itself. Annoyingly, I can't, uh, I can't show you that, can I? Let me just see if I can take that down a little bit there. Yeah, a lot more mood to the image there, which is roughly where about, round about where I've got the exposure set on the camera. That's gonna look really wonderful when I get it processed. So I shall put that image on now and then get on with the uh, trip up the path to see if I can find anything else. So this plant in front of me here is Enchanter's Nightshade. Really, really beautiful, delicate little woodland plant. And it's not often you see such a cluster of it in one place. It's, it's more often than not distributed um, in sparse patches throughout the woodland. And you, you do find it a lot along the path sides. I'm gonna have a go at photographing it. It's not an easy plant to photograph. I've never photographed it before. The reason being, the, the, the flowering st um, stems, you get the seed heads at the bottom, you get fresh flowers about to come out at the top and then just a little cluster of flowers in the middle. You never get a full spike of flowers. And it's for that reason I've never really bothered with them. But because there's such a dense cluster, I think there might be a little creative image to be had with the macro lens. So I'll just give it a quick go. So I finally managed to get myself a, a frame that I really quite like. Now, You'll see me do this method so many times with the looking through the LCD and just moving the macro lens around. And uh, I just wasn't feeling it for the reasons I've mentioned about the way that these spikes are just, the way that the, the growth occurs on the, on the, on the flowering heads themselves. And um, ordinarily I'd focus on the flowering spike and I'd use the surrounding out of focus backgrounds to, to make a creative image. But like I say, I just wasn't feeling it. So I did think to myself, what about if I focus in the center of the cluster and try and compose something with, with a few of the heads together? And I did find one. Um, I have absolutely no chance of finding it again. I've put the camera down, it's just disappeared forever. But um, it, was a, it was a cluster of a few spikes together with one, possibly two, that were quite sharp. And, um, and the rest just form the composition, the other spikes around it just nicely placed. Uh, I was lucky enough to get one specular highlight coming through the background, which just lifts the composition up that little bit more. But um, certainly from the point of view of my normal technique, uh, one to one, and, and looking around, just couldn't find anything at all. But, um, but really quite happy with that last one. I haven't actually checked to see if, <laughs> if whether it's sharp or not. Gosh, I hope it is. Um, yeah, yeah, it's fine. So yeah, quite happy with that one, so I'll put that on now. So I've arrived in the beech wood section, uh, as it goes without saying. Beautiful canopy in beech woodlands, but typically the understory is often like this, really, really sparse and burr. Um, more often than not, certainly in, in Lancashire at least, this is what you get um, on the floor of a beech wood. And in autumn time, of course, when they lose a lot of the leaves, all this is carpeted by that lovely golden colour that we get. But this time of year, 
very, very little, just the odd seed, um, seed husk and bits of last year's beech mast and nothing else. But when I came here last week, the, the, um, the normal route would be to walk straight um, ahead. That's where the footpath generally heads. And um, it's funny how luck plays a role in the images that you find. Um, I say look, it, it, it does pay to explore a particular woodland and don't leave any stone unturned. Go and look at every angle that you possibly can. But the temptation is to follow the path and just see what you can pick up along the routes. Now, when I got here last week, we, we stood and pondered for a few minutes and I noticed that just in the background there that there's a big old beech tree come down in storms. In fact, there's a couple more further back. And it sort of obstructs the route and I just naturally went up the hill and uh, up there is where the image is that I took uh, or showed should I say on the back end of last week's video so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the camera up there the video camera and I'm going to walk past the uh, the scene to see if you can spot it as I walk past I'm going to just literally hold the camera up and just pan along whilst holding the camera and just see if you can pick it out Right, so climbing up the hill, I'll rotate the camera around now and uh, literally I will take you up the route that I walked. So I'm saying nothing else at this point. Obviously if you haven't seen the video from last week, you're at a bit of a disadvantage and even more of a challenge to see if you can see the composition. So I'm going to move a little bit for further forward and uh, take another sweep. Do we a drone for this really? And if you've not got it by now, I'll take another sweep. So going back to the composition and it's not much different to that. That is the starting point um, for that image that I, that I began with when I came last time. So I hope you found that really useful. I never tried that before. I just wanted to try and reconstruct um, the effect of me coming up the hill with my phone in my hand and, and looking for, for compositions. and. Uh, this one really jumped out at me. Now, granted at the time I had um, a wide angle lens on my phone and it really exaggerates the shapes, um, which that, that particular lens doesn't do. So maybe a little bit harder to spot the composition, but um, it's this, this here is, is the main uh, character, of course, this lovely big old beach here. And it's probably one of the bigger ones in, in this particular wood. And it's, it's I think what drew me to it initially. I mean, to be fair, it's a straight up and down tree. It's not what you would call um, characterful. Um, it's very, very typical of a beech tree and not like your oaks that are very twisty and, and you know, contorted. But what I liked about it was the two trees at the back and the wide angle lens really emphasizes that. And it's basically this one here and this one here. Oh, where are you? This one, this one here off to the right. Um, I didn't realise you couldn't see me. But um, yeah, th those two frame this one and the rest of the woodland just falls into place. Now there were a couple of issues that I, I'm going to get the camera up and I'll just talk you through them now that I have with it. And it's all to do with the background. I'm sure you've already noticed at least one of them. So whilst I'm setting up, actually, this is <coughs> the wide angle lens that I used. This is the only lens that I own that I bought brand new. All the rest are old manual focuses, len focus lenses that cost no more than three or 400 pounds. This one's autofocus, um, shape reduction, none of which I ever used, but it was the only wide angle version that I could get. I will not tell you how much that thing cost because it was an arm and a leg, but uh, one of the lenses I used least of all, but good quality whenever I do use it. So, Whilst I'm setting this up, I just wanted to make the point that 
I've lined the video camera up at a critical point or almost critical point. You can see the two trees that flank the main character, how the distances are roughly on that video camera, maybe not completely, um, fairly evenly spaced on either side. That's really critical. And what happened when I was here last week or week before in that storm is that we both wanted to photograph it in those conditions and the, the distance between the two trees is so critical that we literally had our cameras positioned touching one another to get the composition right during the storm. We just didn't have enough time when that storm came through to swap things about and change positions. So that's how crucial it is to get the image lined up exactly as it needs to be. So really pay attention to those distances. Right, I'll just talk you through the composition now because there's one or two other things I wanted to mention and then I'll put the image on once again. So that was the starting point of the image as I lined it up um, when I originally came and set up in the first instance. And it was the canopy of the beech trees that I'm always dra drawn to and I wanted to incorporate them. But immediately I just felt that the trunk of the tree was just too long, too straight, and it didn't, it didn't add anything to the frame. And I decided in the end to lose all that and focus on purely the, uh, the trunk itself and the two trees at the back just realign that. So by zooming in a little bit, angling the camera down, you can see that the canopy of the back two trees now starts to come into play. And that's what I was really focusing on. So crucial to get the tree dead centre. Now the things that I mentioned that I didn't like, there's two of them. Um, the first, off to the left hand side here, you can see the stone wall. There's absolutely nothing I could do about that. And that's one of the things that I've just had to be, become at peace with as part of the image. No one on the video um, when I showed it the other week uh, mentioned it. I'm, I'm sure many of you picked up on it, but um, there's not a lot I could do with that. In order to, to screen that out, it, it put the tree off balance and I didn't like it. There was far too much on this side. So it was, I felt it was a compromise that was worth making. The second thing I'm not too keen on is this gap on the right hand side. But again, with the conditions that they were, it, it, it sort of helped to fill that gap in. It wasn't such a bright spot. And if anything, it allowed a bit of the background misty light to feed through to the tree. And even today, you can see on the left-hand side of the tree where the, where the light's coming from the left-hand side, just picking up the details on, on the left side of the trees there, making all the, all the right-hand sides of the trunks go into deep shade, adding to the overall atmosphere. I love this little triangle of grass just at the base here. That really picked up well on the original photograph. So thank you for indulging me in that revisit to this location. I hope you found that walkthrough useful. It was, I just wanted to show you through my eyes how the whole image came about. And um, I couldn't really do that on the last video without revisiting the location. I'm gonna put the two images on now again. Um, some of you, of course, will have already seen those. I'm not gonna put the one that I've just taken now because I want to have the direct comparisons once again. And what I will say is that this image isn't 100% representative of what I took last time. I, I cropped the last one down to a square crop for the final frame. So yeah, I'll put those two on now. So you get the first one in the good light, or should I say the, the, the normal light as it is today, followed by that second one with that deluge of rain, just to show what a difference a few minutes can make. I know, I'm sure there will be some of you shouting at the screen right now that there's a composition that I'm walking through and I have seen it uh, remarkably. I didn't see it when I was here before because this tree here is the tree that I photographed in the torrential downpour and um, I failed in my own rule to not explore the immediate vicinity 
I took it for granted that this was the only shot when I moved on. But um, there's lots of qualities to be had in this particular um, shot that I've got this camera lined up on now. Starting with this tree on the left and the nice basal cavity there. Makes me wonder if there's any, any potential bat roofs up there. You could certainly get in that. Anyway, I digress. So we've got three trees leading the eye through. That one being the main anchor point. This one here as well. But then this really interesting one down at the bottom here. The end point to the frame. Now this is a really interesting tree. It's a lovely end point for the image. But what is interesting is that this is a separate tree at the back. It's not fixed as it would appear. The, the compressed view makes it appear that it's a tree with lots of twisty features. Now down here on the right hand side, this one plays an important role. This one here with a nice V in it. I like that as well. Being careful not to show too much of anything off to the, to the right hand side of it. And then of course, we've got this one here. So they're all nicely spaced out trees, really helping the composition all come together. And then down at the bottom, in this gap, you've got a cluster of beaches there filling that area there. Now on a day like today, it's not going to make the best image in the world, more of a record shot really. And I have taken one, just a quick one for a reference point. I'm not overly keen on the path. Um, a little bit of a path is fine, but this is quite a scar. But what I'm thinking about is coming back to this location in midwinter when there's snow on the ground. Snow and mist, you know, be absolutely beautiful. So I want to come back to absolutely certain of that. But what a lesson to learn. You've really got to explore every angle, walk around all the trees. I've said it so many times, I can't believe I didn't do it myself. Thank you all so much for watching today's video. Images to come in just a second. If you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to press the like button. And if you want to see more, you can always subscribe to the channel. It costs nothing to do that. Leave some comments, let me know what you think of today's images and if you want to support the channel more you can always become a member. You can do that by joining YouTube or Patreon for as little as 99 pence per month. So until next time, I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.